Uh, I bring you greetings on behalf of uh, Dr. Eastep and also Tabita Gonzalez, our district superintendent and district missionary. They would like to be here today. They are both installing a brand new pastor on our district. They send their greetings and their love to you. And they too are just really happy for what's happening right here in Grandview Church. So uh, we're grateful. We have about a hundred different ministries on the Kansas City District. And every, and I'm sorry, go ahead. And every Sunday, there are about 10 languages that are being spoken. And that's really fabulous. And exciting. And confusing. <laughs> Because we want to embrace every culture. We want to embrace every people. And we love all people. We love all people. And everyone is welcome at the table. Do you love the holidays? I love the holidays. I spent all day decorating yesterday. Well, inside. <laughs> Too cold for outside. But the inside is done. At least it'll look decent for about six weeks or so. It's always such a mess, isn't it, to start decorating? Oh, but when it's all done, it looks great. In just a few days, we'll be celebrating around the Thanksgiving table. I don't know that your, tab your table will look like this one coming up here. My table won't look exactly like that. But it will be a full table full of food and family. And, and I remember, maybe you do as well, maybe when you were a child, that everybody gathered around the table, but sometimes there wasn't enough room for everyone around the table. And so when you were young, you were sent to the kid table. And the one table looks so nice. And it, just, and it just said, welcome. And then you go to the kid table. It looks something like this. You remember that, don't you? The good news is that you always got your food first. Then you were, then you were sent to the kid's table. And there was always enough. It's just uh, something that you didn't get to enjoy the, the really nice decorated table. And then there was that one day where they said, why don't you sit at this table? You didn't know what to do. You didn't know what was wrong. It's, this is not the norm. But there's something about being welcome to the table. Do you know that you're welcome to the table of the Lord Jesus Christ? God, God invites you to His table. Some of us don't feel worthy. Some of us don't feel like we deserve that. God has a place for you and me at His table. Pero 
You know, the Bible is all about the story of God. We, it starts with creation. We, we hear the story of disobedience with Adam and Eve. And we understand the whole redemption story to bring man back into a relationship with God. And there is the ongoing mission of the church as well. To carry out the mission of Christ. Our texts this morning are really two. The first is found in the second chapter of Genesis. The creation has already been completed. And, and as we know, God created man in his own image. And it says in chapter 2 and verse 15 and 16, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to put to work it and to care for it. And the Lord commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. Dice, y se tomó pues Jehová Dios al hombre y lo puso en el huerto de Edén para que la labrara y lo guardase. Y mandó Jehová Dios al hombre diciendo, you understand there's one piece that I left out there. <laughs> there was one tree that they weren't supposed to be eating from. But there was an invitation to just enjoy the, to be welcome to that table. And then we skip to the very last chapter of the Bible. Revelation 22 and verse 17. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. And the one who is thirsty, Come. 17. 22, 17. And that's Exodus? Oh, no. Revelation. Uh, Revelation 22, 17. Jesus or uh, God says in his word, come and eat, come and drink. The very beginning and the very end of the Bible, there is an invitation to come and be welcomed at his table. Do you ever not feel welcome? I remember early on when I was going to school, and lunchtime would come and I could sit anywhere I wanted to. And yet I was scared to death. I did not know if I was welcome at a table. Some days I sat by myself. Other days people waved me over, sit here. God is waving us over to his table. And I would suggest to you that the Bible speaks to this meal at the beginning and drinking at the end. As a continuing invitation to know that we are welcome at his table. I would like to offer 
four quickly, four illustrations from God's Word. And we're going to work through these. We're going to work through these pretty quickly. Uh, in the first case, the Israelites had just been freed from years of captivity. They were, they were finally freed. And there they were in the wilderness. And as, as they were in the wilderness, they got hungry. And they had nothing to eat. Listen to these words from Exodus 16 in the first five verses. Then the whole assembly, the whole community of Israel set out from Elam and they journeyed into the wilderness of Sin and between Elam and Mount Sinai. They arrived there on the 15th day of the second month, one month after leaving the land of Egypt. And there too, the whole assembly of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. And there, they, there, at least we sat around pots filled with meat and they ate all kinds of bread we wanted. But now, you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. And then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day, the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. And I will test them in this to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. And on the sixth day, they will gather food. And when they prepare it, there will be twice as much as usual. Segundo mes después de que salieron de la tierra de Egipto, y toda la congregación de los hijos de Israel murmuró contra Moisés y Aarón en el desierto. Y les decían los hijos de Israel: Ojalá hubiéramos muerto por la mano de Jehová en la tierra de Egipto cuando nos sentábamos a las orejas a las orejas de carne cuando comíamos pan hasta sentarnos. Pues no habéis sacado a este desierto para matar de hambre a toda esta multitud. Y Jehová le dijo a Moisés, he aquí, yo os llevaré para el cielo y, y el pueblo saldrá y recogerá diariamente la porción limpia para que yo lo vea y si hace en la ley o no, mantén el sexto día preparado para guardar el doble de lo que solían God made a promise to those who would be welcome to his table. He promised that he would provide what everyone needed. Must have been a great relief for them to know that every day they would have enough to provide. Can you imagine if you were one of the parents of children? We probably have kids that are here hungry today. You can almost smell some of the food in the background here this morning. Every day God provided. Because they're welcome at the table. Let me give you a second illustration. This is from Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 11. Uh, maybe you know the story of Nehemiah. The title that he had was one of a cup bearer. <laughs> what it really was, was a taste tester. He was told that he had to drink the wine and the juice before the king did. Just in case if it was poisoned. How many would like to sign up for that job? <laughs> what a risky job that is. 
Listen to verse 11 in chapter 1. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man, though uh, I was a cup bearer to the king. El número 11 dice, te ruego, oh Jehová, este, o oh, ahora anteno al oído a la oración de su siervo y, que, y a la oración de su Reverencia tu nombre con sede ahora buen éxito a tu siervo y dale gracias delante de aquel varón porque yo tenía la in the first one we learn that God provides what people need in this one we learn that God protects his people anybody here need protection today we live in a pretty uh, difficult day don't we The Christian voice is being challenged on every front. God protects his people. And you are welcome at that table as well. Our third one is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 21. This is just following the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus, it says in Acts, appeared to over 500 people. On one occasion, uh, Jesus met up with some of his closest disciples. John 21, 10 through 12. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have caught. And so Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and he dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many of them, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, come, come and have breakfast. Uh, 21, 10 through 12. Jesús les dijo, traer a los peces que allí se desentrar. Subió Simón, Pedro y sacó la, la red de la tierra llena de, llena de grandes peces, 153, y aún sentados tanto, la red no se lo vio. Les dijo Jesús, vení y comer, y ninguno de los discípulos se atrevía a preguntar, ¿tú quién es el sabido que eres el Señor? God provides and God protects. And God invites us into a relationship. At this time of the resurrection, he just simply says, you're welcome, let's have breakfast together. <laughs> he did all the hard work and caught the fish. 153 of them is a pretty good morning. <laughs> Come and have breakfast. Time to just be with each other. To engage in relationship with each other. That's part of God's invitation. The fourth one that I will submit to you today is found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 15. This is the famous story, the parable of the lost son. Uh, uh, verse 22 through 24, we know the story fairly well. I just want you to hear the end of this. The son was coming back after he had left. Scripture said he squandered his wealth. And so he decided to come home and literally beg to his father. Listen to verse 22 through 24. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, 
bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Okay, vamos a ir a Lucas 15, 22. Dice, pero el padre dijo a su siervo, saca el mejor vestido y vestido y pon un anillo en su mano y calzado en sus pies. Y trae el becerro gordo y mata. ¿Vale? Y comamos y hagamos fiesta. Porque este es mi hijo muerto era y revivió. Se había perdido y, es, y ha llegado y comenzó a God provides and God protects. God invites us into a relationship. God knows how to throw a party. He invited them in for a celebration. Let's have a barbecue. Here's what I think. Some people here today need to be provided for. Maybe there's somebody here that needs protection. Maybe somebody needs to know that God wants to have a relationship with them. God wants to affirm who you are and celebrate. It's really intriguing to see how many different times in the New Testament that Jesus is around food. I just want to put a, a, a just a quick slide up here. You can read this for yourself. The wedding at the Cana of Galilee, feeding of the 5,000. He was with Levi, the tax collector. He was also with Zacchaeus, another tax collector. Um, and uh, early on in Mark, it says that he was with a woman, a sinner. He went to Mary and Martha's house. Even on the road to Emmaus after the resurrection, Scripture said he stayed and had supper with them. And then, of course, the reference I just gave you about having breakfast on the shore with Peter and the disciples. Jesus must have liked food. He must have enjoyed this table. And he welcomed all walks of life to the table. Do you know that you're welcome to the table? Regardless of your past, regardless of your failures or your brokenness, you are welcome to the table of Christ. He speaks your language. He understands your background. He accepts you just the way you are right now. Now, he's going to invite you into a deeper walk with him. But you are invited right now. I need to close, don't I? <laughs> I need to close this sermon. <laughs> I, want to, I want to suggest to you a couple of what I refer to as takeaways. I wish we had time to ask you, what are you thinking right now? But I'm the one with the microphone. <laughs> Three takeaways. It's not about the food, it's about relationship. It's not about the food, the dishes, all of that. It's about how we're connecting with one another. It's one of the reasons why I'm so thrilled to be here today. To have a uh, Voz de Dios um, as a part of this congregation. I am convinced that the voice of God will be loud and large. 
What a wonderful partnership is at this table. Another one of my takeaways is this. If we're not careful, we can get to the table and not give our attention to the people who are at the same table with us. Let's, let's give our full attention to one another at the table. We listen to one another's stories. We hear the way their hearts have been broken. We've heard how they have found victory in Jesus Christ. It's, it's all God's story in each one of us. Let's give our full attention to others. My third takeaway. God has invited me. You and you and you and you. God has invited me to his table. There is a seat for you. You're welcome at his table. You're not welcome to the child's table. Jesus loves you with everything he has. You're a part of his family. And we just walk daily in his love, in his goodness. As our relationship with him grows and grows and grows. It is my hope that you plant that tree soon. And take periodic pictures of it. Send it back to these crazy people here. They're going to want to see the growth. We see growth in one another around the table. And can I tell you, the table is not just big enough for us only. There's always room for one more, isn't there? Welcome to the table. Let's pray. Father God, we give you thanks this day. We pray, oh God, that you would just um, continue to send the invitations out. We, we know from Revelations 3 that you're just at the door knocking. An invitation to open the door of our heart. An invitation to come to the table. Your table. Thank you for welcoming each one of us here today. God, if there's somebody here who hasn't feel that welcome yet, would you soften that heart? May they know that they don't have to get right before they come to the table. But as you invite them and you welcome them to the table, that you will provide and you will protect and we'll even celebrate together. May you continue to speak to each one of our hearts these days. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.